Soybean aphids. Boy, I like talking about this one, Darren, because there's controversy here. The controversy comes down to what's the right threshold? What's the economic threshold there? I look at it this way. When you're talking about any kind of insect, it all depends on what time of year that bug gets out in your field. Uh, so with soybean aphids, the earlier they get out in your field, when it's closer to when the seed is being made, that's a big deal. When they come into your field for the first time in late August or early September, when you're going to harvest a few weeks later, you know what? It may not be as big of a deal. So the threshold kind of changes in my mind, depending on the susceptibility of that crop and, and what time of year it's going to be. Okay, so this 250 aphid threshold, that started back in, I believe the year was 2004. It was one of the first years where there was a major outbreak of aphids around the country. And so all these entomologists were giving different thresholds. Some would say 100, some would say 1,000. So they had a big conference, they got together, and they decided, you know, as a unified front, we need to have 250 as our aphid number. Okay, so that was back in 2004, whatever. Uh, it, you can agree with that 250 back then or not. But the point is, since that time, the soybean price has about doubled. The cost of insecticide is about one third of what it was before. And our yield goal is probably 10 bushels higher on our own farm. It's actually 20 to 25 bushels higher. The economics of soybean farming have completely changed in that eight year time span. If the economics have changed, then shouldn't the threshold change? Isn't well, that the very definition of economic threshold? Especially when they refer threshold? to it as economic threshold, right. yes. Yet the aphid threshold is still 250 by many people's account. I don't understand that. It's the well, only bug in the world, seriously. I've studied this, I've studied entomology for over 20 years. It's the only bug in the world that I know of that when the economics change, for some reason, Darren, the economic threshold doesn't change. Let's just talk about controlling this bug because uh, there's no farmer that I know that waits until there's 250 aphids per plant before he sprays. They're all pulling right. the trigger early. Right, so on our farm, we're pulling the trigger somewhere in the range of 10 to 25 aphids per plant. We think that's about the right threshold. I would caution you though to make sure you're scouting your whole field because you could walk into a field and see, oh my goodness, I get a thousand aphids per plant, but then you go scout the whole rest of the field and you don't find any. Okay, you ended up with a hot spot there. When you average it all out, you probably only had five aphids per plant across the whole field. All right, so there's a couple ways to look at it. Maybe you have just a few aphids and you say, ah, it's not enough to treat, but you also have some grasshoppers and some bean leaf beetles. Well, you know what? Rather than looking at the threshold for one bug, look at the whole field, see what's out there. If you say, wow, I'm just about to threshold on three different pests all at the same time in my field, you may pull the trigger a little bit. Okay, sooner. so the great thing with soybean aphids, if there is a great thing, is the fact that insecticides are dirt cheap now. You can go out with a full rate of silencer or the full rate of declare for somewhere around two to three dollars an acre. That's it. It doesn't cost very much money at all. Also, there are some respray programs available. Just make sure you're talking to your dealer if potentially a respray might be needed later on. So you go out with one of these pyrethroids like silencer or declare. You can mix that right in with a fungicide. You can mix it right in with a herbicide. No problem at all. You go spray. You should get one to two weeks worth of residual control and you'll knock your aphid numbers down to almost zero almost immediately. Well hold on there now if you want to knock aphids down even quicker you can use something like Lorsben. It's going to be faster at knocking aphids down than what a pyrethroid is going to be. Now the residual window may be slightly less but there are other benefits besides the quick knockdown you're also going to kill mites like spider mites for example you know we've been fairly dry Brian and when you're dry We've yep. got more of a chance of seeing spider mites out there. Why not hit the mites and the aphids with one Well, product? the reason why, Darren, is because I just don't know if I can afford 4 to $5 an acre. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, today's so, bean prices, you cannot afford to spend 4 or 5 bucks yep, to protect so, that crop. Lorsband costs double what the pyrethroid <laughs> oh, does. Oh, yeah, it's so, terrible. Oh, my yeah, goodness. It, 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 it's just so <laughs> ridiculous now because when we first were fighting aphids, we were talking about six, eight, even ten dollars for insecticide costs. Now we're we're saying, oh, I don't know if I can spend more than two to three dollars oh. for insecticide. <laughs> Give but me a break. Yeah, but seriously, <laughs> if you have spider mites and you're concerned about spider mites, you want to come back with Lord's Vent. So like on our farm, most likely we're going to end up spraying twice. This is a bad year for aphids, so we're going to hit them once with a pyrethroid. We're going to come back three, two to three weeks later with a chlorpyrifos. So we've got different modes of action. We get our spider mites later when they're more likely to set in. I think that's the best well, way to go. Well, you can spend just a little bit more money than, than your standard uh, you know, pyrethroids like a silencer or a declare, for example. Instead of that, you could go with capture. 
Capture would also give you some activity on those mites. Then if yep. you had some mites out in the area, you could do capture one pass, lures ban another pass, that would be fine. Or you could use one of those combination products like a cobalt, for example. It's got a pyrethroid in there, but it's also got lures ban in there. That's a good way to go. But the combination products I don't really like are the ones that have the neonicotinoids in there, right. uh, like a leverage or an indigo plus a pyrethroid. And there's nothing wrong with those products. I'm not bashing those products. They'll work just fine and everything. The problem is that the neonicotinoids are the only chemical family we have for insecticide seed treatments. Good the, insecticide seed yeah, treatments. Things like gaucho, cruiser, poncho. We want to preserve those. and They're being used in many crops across our country. I, I think we're being a little bit selfish using the neonicotinoids as post-emerge treatments in our soybeans. Yep, so you may have heard about how these neonicotinoids are killing bees out there. Well, it's a little bit ridiculous what some of the studies are that have been done. But really, honestly, what they found is that if the seed treatment is in the ground, we're not getting a lot of bee death. Where the bee death is coming from is the neonicotinoid used post-emerge. So what we're trying to tell you is quit using leverage, quit using indigo, quit using any of those neonicotinoids post-emerge. You don't need them anyway. Just spray the pyrethroid, then come back, spray the chlorpyrifos. That's going to preserve our neonicotinoids so we can keep them for more years using on seed treatment. Okay, now with soybean aphids, you may wonder, how long do I need to control them? Because I'm already spraying them in July. Am I going to have to spray them in August? Am I going to have to spray them in September? When is the end date? The end date depends on your area of the country and the soybean maturity that you've raised. I always tell guys, keep scouting all up until the time the beans start to turn color. So for us on our farm, that's somewhere around the 1st of September. So once you start seeing yellow leaves yep. out in your field, even the just beans a few are yellow leaves. leaves, yeah, then the aphids are going to move off those because there isn't the good green lush growth anymore. But August 15th, we've seen data in the past where guys have sprayed August 15th and had significant yield gains in our area of the country. So keep scouting, keep spraying all up until the time you see your plants starting to mature. So do the math yourself on your farm. When you've got aphids out in your fields, don't wait for 250 of them per plant. Look at what time of year it is, what the value of your crop is, the cost of what it's going to be to spray those insects, and what potential damage they could cause. Make up your own mind or look at some independent studies. The aphid threshold, right about the time soybeans are flowering, may be as low as 10 aphids per plant treat accordingly on your farm. Well, one thing it seems like we need to treat for every year is our weed of the week. It's a terrible problem in many areas of the country, especially because we've got resistant plants. We'll talk about that coming up later in the show.